Hi guys, uh, beginning chapter 5. Um, a few things that we should talk about before we get into the lecture and the lecture document. Uh, chapter 5 is on the continuous random variable and we end up treating it quite a bit differently than we do uh, the discrete random variable, although a lot of similarities uh, of course as well. So I want to just kind of give you a flavor of uh, what we're going to be seeing at the beginning of that lecture document, I'm trying to ease in a little bit here with these prerequisites. Okay, uh, so what I have drawn here um, is, uh, you know, just a graph. You can think of it as an XY plane. And on that graph, you know, I've, I've drawn this rectangle, so it's five units wide and four units tall, um, and we see the X and Y axes um, going in each direction. Okay. So here's the first question. Uh, what is the total area of that rectangle? Um, well, that's kind of interesting. Why are we talking about area um, when, you know, where this is leading is in calculating probabilities. Um, so it turns out in the continuous random variable, um, we, we think of um, a lot of graphs and areas of graphs. And so, okay, this is kind of warming us up. So what is the area of that rectangle? Well, you know, base times height, right? Five times four would be the area of our rectangle, which in this case is 20. We don't need to worry about units. We'll just say it's 20. Now here's an interesting question. What is the area up to x equals 2? Uh, so if this is 5, you know, maybe we could sort of guess, you know, I don't know, I'm just sort of guessing, maybe about right there is 2. So the area up to 2 would be the area from 0 to 2. From x equals 0 to x equals 2. What is that area? Well, again, base times height, right? 2 times 4, which gives us 8. Okay. And now here's the connection to probability. Let me try and slide this up a bit. What is the probability that a point is between x equals 0 and x equals 2? So the idea is we're thinking... You know, this, uh, this graph is filled with points. You know, some of the points are in the shaded regions. A lot of, more of the points are maybe out over here. Um, so think, you know, if you randomly select one point from this total space, what is the chances that it would fall into that shaded region? And well, um, all we've got to do actually is compare the areas. So the probability that a randomly selected point is between x equals 0 and x equals 2, we take the area that is between x equals 0 and x equals 2, and we divide it by the total area, um, so 8 over 20. And in this case, that would happen to give us 0.4. There's a 40% chance that our point would lie in that shaded region compared to the whole thing. And that makes sense. Right, it's a little bit less than half. Um, you know, two out of five, even two out of five is is forty percent. Eight out of twenty is forty percent. So there you go. Hmm, okay. How about this? What is the area from x equals two to x equals three? So let me erase this shaded region. Let's say two is there and three. Uh, I don't know, maybe 3. I don't know if that is the right scaling, but maybe 3 is about right there. So the area between 2 and 3 is just right here. Well, what is that area? Well, again, base times height. Here the base is only 1, 1 unit. That height is still 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. And then tying it into probability, what is the probability that a randomly selected point in that whole big rectangle uh, will fall between x equals 2 and x equals 3? So if we select any random point inside here, what's the chances it falls inside that shaded region? Well, we're going to go about it just like we did 
The previous one, we compare the areas. So if that area between 2 and 3 is 4, then we can divide that by the total area of 20. And uh, if you grab your calculator and tell it 4 divided by 20, you'll get 0.2, or 20%. Again, makes sense. It's half of the probability of being between 0 and 2. I mean, yeah, so that region, you know, not really to my drawing, but this is supposed to be half the size of this, you know. Okay, I think, I think hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and now here's where things get, you know, a, a little bit bizarre when it comes to the continuous random variable. Um, let's let's look at this question. What is the area from x equals two to x equals two? So going back to the drawing, think, okay, let's get rid of that three and get rid of all that shaded area. And we'll just draw this line at 2. What is the area from x equals 2 to x equals 2? And he's like, that's a weird question to ask, because there's not any area there. Um, it's just a line. And yep, base times height. This time, the base would be 0. The height is still 4, but with the base being 0, the area, of course, would be 0. There's, it's, it's just that line. There's no area at all. Okay, so then let's take it that one step further with the probability. What is the probability that a randomly selected point is on the line at x equals 2? Okay, or, you know, this could be phrased as what's the probability that a point is between x equals 2 and x equals 2? In other words, it's on that line. Well, if we follow the same pattern from the other problems, which we're going to do, the answer is surprising, right? Here we said, well, take the area and divide it by the total area of 20. We're going to do the same thing. Take the area that we just calculated, 0, divide it by the total area, and it turns out the probability that a randomly selected point is on that line at 2 is 0. In other words, if we select a point, let me go back to the drawing, if we select a random point in here, there's a zero probability, a zero percent chance that we end up picking a point right on that line. Now this is very strange. It is, seems like, wait a second, but there are points on that line. How could the chances be zero? There are points on that line. It's true, there are points on the line, but yes, the probability of picking any one of them is zero. You will not pick, if you pick a random point from in here, it will not be on that line. Nor would it be on the line at x equals 3, nor would it be on the line at x equals 1 or 4 or any of those. Um, and that seems very, very bizarre. Uh, but maybe I can give you some sort of insight why it would be true. There are infinitely many points on this line. How could there be a 0% chance of picking them? There's infinitely many points on that line. Okay, but there's also infinitely many points within that rectangle. And it turns out the points within the rectangle are an infinity of infinities, which seems really strange. Um, but at any given line, right, at any given point, there's an infinite number of points above it. So how many points are there between 0 and 5? Infinitely many. And at all of those infinitely many points, there are infinitely many points going up so there's an infinity of infinities. And when you're trying to pick out of one infinity from an infinity of infinities, it's just never going to happen. Um, OK, so that's really bizarre. Maybe that made things more confusing. OK, let me explain it another way. Let's say you go to pick a point, and you're really trying your 
hardest to pick a point that's on the line at two. Okay, so you're seeing the points there, and you you don't know what like the x y coordinates are, but you're you're trying to pick one. Or let's say, um, let's put it this way. Let's say you know this is like a dartboard, okay, and you've got a dart in your hand, and you're throwing darts at that area, and you're trying to hit that line. I'm going to tell you there's a 0% chance you're ever going to hit that line. Why? What? How, how is it possible to never hit the line? I mean, there it is. I see it. So let's say you throw the dart and it gets, you know, it gets super close to the line. And it looks like you hit the line. Okay. I mean, from all you can tell, it, it, it looks like you hit that line. But if you go up and you look really close, it's never going to be right on that line. So sort of think of like zooming in, right, which we can't really do here with a piece of paper. But, you know, you get a, um, a magnifying glass and you look closer and it's like, it still looks like it's on that line. And then you put it under a microscope and you really zoom in. If you zoom in far enough, it's going to be a little bit to the side of that line. It's never going to be perfectly on the line. You cannot hit the line. You can get really close, but it's never going to hit that line exactly. Okay, I'm, I'm sure that's still not satisfying of why we can't hit the line. Um, and if that's the case at this point, just accept it. The probability is zero. The area is zero, so the probability is zero over 20, which is zero. You're, we're just never going to pick a point that's on that line. Okay, there's one other thing you need to know coming in to this chapter. Uh, we're going to see the number E here again. We saw the number E um, in the Poisson distribution, so it's kind of nice. We got a little flavor for it there. Um, this time when we see E, though, um, sometimes it's not just going to be calculating and putting that into our calculators. Sometimes we're actually uh, going to need to solve equations involving E. And so I think it's a good idea to review that uh, before we go any further. So let's um, look at this situation, um, number two in our prereqs. Solve E raised to the 3x equals 5. Okay, so this might sound more familiar to some people than to others, but I'm going to pretend like this is the first time anybody's ever seen this. Um, e raised to the 3x equals 5. We're going to have to do something to both sides of this equation. Um, and the idea is we're going to cancel out the E. We're going to do something that will cancel that E. What do you do to cancel E? Maybe some of you know. Maybe some of you, um, I'm, again, I'm going to pretend like you never heard of this before. Um, what we do is we take the natural log of both sides. So that symbol right there is the natural log or the natural logarithm. Uh, and the letters get reversed, LN, you would think it'd be NL, but I, I believe it's uh, in Latin, you know, they put the adjective in the second position. So logarithm natural. Okay, and what that does for us, um, that natural log here and this e cancel out. Okay, so we did the natural log to both sides. So the natural log of e to the 3x equals the natural log of 5. But we do that because this cancels, which tells us 3x equals the natural log of 5. And then we can divide by 3. X equals the natural log of 5 divided by 3. And now we're going to grab our calculator. You will be able to find in a scientific calculator, it will have a natural log button somewhere. So I went ahead and rounded this whole thing to three decimal places. And in this case, it's 0.536. Okay, um, that's it for our prereqs. See you in the next video.